lot of reversal strategies. But there's one that I really like, and that is the strong trend reversal strategy. It works on any time frame in all markets, and I trade stocks, Forex, and futures. The strategy combines the concepts of trends, velocity, and magnitude, which are key ingredients for analyzing price action. Now, with this strategy, we don't have to assume a reversal will occur. Rather, we wait for a number of key factors to align that signal a reversal is underway. The strategy then gets us in at an advantageous price so that we can capitalize on the next major price wave in the new direction. So as you can see on this chart above, and I'm gonna take you over some live charts shortly, but we wanna observe something happening and the markdown so that we can get in at the proper time. We don't have to use oscillators and indicators and huge amounts of information. We are using a setup. That means specific things have to happen. Now, most of the time we are better off trading with the trend because when the price is moving in a dominant direction, we tend to get a lot of risk reward ratios and a lot of more marketing opportunities. Now, remember a trend, now not a trend line, but a trend to signify and I'm going to use an uptrend, but the exact true is, is for the, the downtrend. It's signified by higher highs and then higher lows. Higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, and higher lows. Okay. Or we can pull it push and call them pushes and ease, push and ease, push and ease. Now, you know, the old adage is to trade with the trend because when this movement starts, we don't necessarily know when it starts. We don't know exactly what caused it to start. We see it starting. So imagine this is the, your hamster in the cage. Okay, your hamster's in a cage. He gets on the wheel. He moves this way and that way. And you know he's kind of lackadaisical. He's still eating with his little claws. But at some point, he starts moving that wheel. Now he can jump off that wheel whenever he wants, but there's times when he starts that wheel going and it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. And what happens is the faster that wheel starts turning, the less ability he, the hamster, has to slow down that wheel, to stop that wheel, because now it's moving with its own momentum. Well, that's what happens in trading. When this move starts taking place, Traders are jumping in, jumping in, jumping in, letting off lots of energy. Well, that energy keeps pushing that asset up. And it takes almost as much energy to stop it. So it's not going to stop on a dime in most cases. It's going to continue. It may peter out and give us signals, but it takes a lot. So that's why trading with a trend is advantageous because once that wheel starts turning, that trend is going to keep moving. It, like I said, it will eventually stop. You don't want to get in here so you get stopped out there. But when this momentum starts happening, okay. and at that point, we have a lot of risk reward ratios in our favor because we can set our limits very high. We, we, we know we're making higher high and then higher low, higher high, higher low. So we know how to set an advantageous stop loss scenario. Now, with the strategy we're going to look at tonight, we can often get huge rewards and risk reward risk ratios because we are getting into a reversal early. Okay. Now, this is what, what we're starting to, to anticipate is that hamster is running out of steam. Okay, we, we want to see when he's slowing down, so the wheel's slowing down, and he's waiting to jump off that wheel. Okay. But there is still evidence that suggests a reversal is underway, okay. which means we can typically keep our risk, and that's the difference, the risk we keep talking about in risk reward is the difference between the entry and the stop loss order. When we can figure out what price we're gonna enter the market, where we have to put our stop loss, and then where our potential target is, 
we can then factor that into our risk reward ratio because we only trade when the risk reward ratio fits our standards, what every you as an individual trader has. Now, this strategy is not a top or a bottom picking strategy. We're not looking for bells and whistles to go off and say, ah, we're at the very top, it's time to sell, or it's time to go in with a short, or at the very bottom, it's time to buy. We're not looking to catch the falling knife. Because picking strategies where we may face small losses before catching a reversal, nor does it rely on patterns like head and shoulders, which typically result in mediocre risk reward ratios. The strategy is in the Goldilocks zones. It gets us in early, but not too early. And that leaves us a lot of profit potential on the table. Now, this pattern will not be present, present for all reversals. This is a strong trend reversal and a very specific pattern. Some reversals may occur via a different pattern, but when we see the market again climbing up, we see this kind of distribution, we call it distribution, when the Buyers who got in are selling and getting out. The potential new shorters are getting in and volumes also lowering because nobody knows exactly what's gonna happen. So this is a distribution. So we have trend distribution and then we have the markdown. Okay. We, we can't predict anything here. We need this to reach the markdown before we can enter the, the market because we want to be sure. So the strong trend reversal trading strategy is based on the tenets of trends and how far or how fast waves are moving. That's magnitude and velocity. Now for an uptrend, we expect that the price waves are going to be bigger than the price waves down. This must happen for the price to make upwards progress. If the price moves up a dollar and the next pullback the price drops down a dollar, we made no progress, so we don't have an uptrend. So during a trend, we expect that the price to move up one dollar and then to pull back maybe 40 cents, maybe 50 cents, maybe 60, that's a 60% retracement before moving higher again. Now, we call these retracements. Some of us can use Fibonacci numbers. Some of us can use just push and ease, higher highs and higher lows. But what happens when you have a wave up and a wave up is just the price moves that occurs between two significant pullbacks that is followed by a bigger wave down. In other words, we had push, ease, push, ease, push, ease. Okay. So we had a bigger wave down than we had a wave up. This doesn't fit with the movements of the uptrend. When a price wave is up for dollars followed by a down wave of $1.20, that is a key piece of evidence that a trend reversal is underway. Push, ease, push, ease, push, ease. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Okay. We could also say it broke the trend or it broke a trend line because when we make a, we don't make a higher low, we make a lower low, that tells us there's something wrong with this trend. Doesn't tell us to buy or sell anything. Now, when this type of pattern occurs, we have one piece of evidence that a reversal is underway, but we want a bit more evidence before we're willing to stake our money on the assumption that this is a reversal. Therefore, we should consider velocity and magnitude. Magnitude has already been discussed. If you have $1 and move up and make $1.20, who do you think has the upper hand? The buyers. Okay, if you have a $1 move up and a $1.20 move down, who do you think has the upper hand? The sellers. The magnitude of the price waves indicate that the sellers, the move down, now have control. 
Velocity is also important though. What if the price spiked up $10 in one day, but then it ups down $11 over the course of the next day or three months? The buyers were frothing at the mouth to buy shares as quickly as possible, while the sellers were much more tentative to sell. It took three months or three candles, or you know, it depends on what time frame you look, to sell for the selling to undo what the buyers did in one day. That isn't a strong reversal. We prefer to have the opposite. Okay. When we have push, ease, push, ease, push, ease, push, ease, and then it goes into some mess over here, but maybe it goes down a little bit, but then it, and it goes back up. Okay. But it hasn't undone what the sellers did, what the buyers did. So we don't have a setup for a strong reversal, okay? We need the magnitude to change. We need to see who's in actual control of the markets to shift. So a rally of $10 over the course of a month should be erased by sellers in days or weeks. The larger and the faster the price wave is in the opposite direction of the trend, the better. So remember, when I'm using days and weeks, we could be using 15-minute candles and one-hour candles. We could be using a trading session and tomorrow's. Okay, you have to figure it into what time frame you're looking at. It's important to stress here that the magnitude is one of the most important factors. A $5 drop in a downtrend that is followed by a much slower 550 rally could also signal that a reversal is underway. But when the rally in the, this case is fast, it just provides a bit more confirmation. So since magnitude is most important, a $7 down wave followed by a $10 up wave is a much more powerful reversal signal than a $7 down wave followed by an $8 up wave. Okay. So you know we're using dollars and cents here to, instead of pips to because to, it's easier for you to see in your head. There is an element to this strategy that's hard to quantify, and this is it. The reversal should break the spirit of the prior trend. And the only way we can break the spirit or have this understanding is for you to test it and to watch it to understand when this is broken. And you can see in the charts when the trend is actually broken and when the momentum has shifted. Meaning when you look at a chart, the reversal should leave no doubt that the overall momentum in that stock or asset has shifted. The above concept will guide you, but it will still take some practice. So let's get into how this strategy works in some examples. So far, we know that we are looking for an up wave that is bigger and preferably faster than the prior down wave or we are looking for a down wave that is bigger and preferably faster than the up rate. Respectively, these signals can do a lot that a downtrend could be over or an uptrend could be over. So let's pop up some live charts and let's just scan them real quickly. Okay, here, strong uptrend, downtrend, strong reversal, but it doesn't wipe out the uptrend. Okay, we did have a big shift, but here we're expecting really an overall confirmation of a continuation. Okay, now here we had an uptrend. Then went into distribution. Because this was distribution. And now, we are probably looking at a continuation of that uptrend or an ongoing rally. So therefore, we don't see a reversal. Let me just get, I'm just trying to get all the markings off of here. Okay, now, again, short downtrend, sideways movement, and then we've got a reversal upward. But it didn't take very long to offset this downtrend. 
Here we see very defined waves, but we don't see any significant break to the movement. Again here. Now here we see this strong downtrend. Not sure what it is, but then we do get this definitive reversal. See how fast this reversal uptrend took out even the previous high and wiped out this whole entire movement here. So it recaptured that movement here, and now we're moving up forward. So far, we know that we are looking for an up wave that is bigger and preferably faster than the previous down wave. This is part of the setup, but we don't do anything yet. Next, we are going to assume that the price will retrace about 50 to 90%. It could be a little bit more, a little bit less, but there are no certainties of the last wave. Fibonacci retracements help you a great deal. If a reversal is very fast and very big, the price will often only retrace about 40% of that big reversal wave. In this case, we can look for a trade near the 40 or 50% level instead of expecting a deeper retracement. For example, assume that the price was trending higher and the last wave up was $10. And that's from the start to the finish. The price then falls $12, signaling that a reversal is likely in place. We now wait for the price to retrace at least half of the drop before we do anything. In this case, that means that the price must bounce by $6, or about half or more is okay, of the prior $12 drop. This is the area that we are going to look for a trading signal. Now, once the price is retraced about 50 to 90% of the previous wave, we're going to wait for the price to consolidate. And that means at least four bars. That, and that could be days, minutes, hours, whatever time frame you're trading. These consolidations don't occur that often in combination with the other things we are watching for. So when they occur inside our trading area, we want to be alert for the trading opportunity. So once we have at least four bar consolidation, or three if you're brave, mark the high and the low of that consolidation. A trade is only taken if the price breaks out of that consolidation in the reversal direction. So in this case, the breakout must occur to the downside because of the big down wave that reversed the uptrend. Still with me? I know, it's a lot of words. Let's go through the steps. Okay, price is an uptrend. A wave lower occurs than the bigger than the last up wave. Preferably the down wave was much bigger, faster, and breaks the spirit of that uptrend. So in other words, price was push, ease, push, ease, push, ease, push, ease, push, ease, moving in a nice uptrend. Then we get this wave that's all the way lower than that. Well, hopefully we're hoping now, if you were in a buy and didn't get out, okay, that's one thing. But if you're looking to open a position, we're hoping that this new low, even if price starts to move back up this way a little bit, broke the back of this trend. Then price retraces between 50 to 90% of that downtrend. So price retraces, say 50% of this movement here. While in that retracement, it consolidates for at least four bars. So what we would enter a short trade if the price drops below the consolidation low. We want to go short since the trend is now likely down. The price breaks above the consolidation, we do nothing. We either wait for a new consolidation to form if the price keeps rising, or if the price immediately drops again, we can take the short entry below the consolidation. So first, let's look at a nice setup that ultimately didn't result in a trade. Unfortunately, the price never consolidates inside the retracement area. So even though everything looked nice, since step number four never developed and thus no trading. 
Okay, so here's the Euro GBP. It is in an uptrend. And has a big wave up followed by an even bigger wave down. Big wave up, bigger wave down. On the down wave, I use the Fibonacci tool to show the retracement zones. So you can see the fib lines. I know this is small on the computer screen. So here's your Fibonacci retracement zones. They, they were drawn on this down wave after it ended. Here we had the uptrend. We have a downtrend that ended. We use that to draw our Fibonacci's on there. And the price needs to consolidate near 0.5 or 0.9 in order to give us a valid trade signal, but it does not. If you are unfamiliar with the Fibonacci tool, we have whole courses in Fibonacci retracement tools. So now let's look at the example that did result in a trade. The instrument was an uptrend and then experienced a massive reversal that erased several of the prior up waves. Once the price started to bounce, we waited for the retracement up of approximately a half to move. So let's move away from here and let's go here. Sorry, hold on a sec. I would call this an advanced trade setup because the price had just made a very sharp one day rally in a few days prior to going short. And we only have a three bar consolidation here. But the day before could be included to make it four. When we see this sort of velocity, I often expect the price to try to edge higher before finally topping usually not to short into that sort of strength, but rather wait for the buying to die out more than before the shorts. Volume will help you see that. Therefore, I have drawn a second box. This would be the alternate entry point. Okay, so here you see the second box. Okay, we have the move up, the move down, the down. Now we have the breaking point of this uptrend, and we have the downtrend. This pattern will often result in another drop after our entry, but not always to the magnitude that we hope for. For stocks, each quarter the company issues earnings. On the chart above, earnings are marked with an E. At the bottom of the chart, I do not hold short trades through earnings announcements. I always get out the day before. And you should always, even whether you're trading indices, whether you're trading currencies, whether you're trading cryptos, whether you're trading um, commodities, always be aware of your economics calendar. Never hold these trades through a major event. So, Remember, if price is in a downtrend, the wave occurs that is bigger than the last down wave. Preferably, the up move is much bigger, faster, and breaks the spirit of the downtrend. The price retraces between 50 to 90% of that wave. While in the retracement area, it consolidates. That means it doesn't move up or doesn't move down. It consolidates for at least four bars. You'd enter a long trade if the price rallies above the consolidation high. So when we have that consolidation, Remember on that little chart, we had a little box off. Okay. We would look for here, the consolidation high. And then if price moved above it, we would then enter a long trade. We have a major down move, which is followed by a rally that is slightly larger than the decline. We also see that a lot of the upside velocity of that initial move up but the price doesn't retrace at least 50% of that move up. If 
it is only after the price keeps moving up that we see the decline was significant, that we connect the retracement tool from the high to the low. The price then continued to trickle up into the October high, and then it drops. There are no four bar consolidations until the price is retraced 90% of the entire move. Once the four bar consolidation is formed, buy on the breakout above consolidation. And so that consolidation, whether it's four bar, five bar, six bar, is ultimately important. This reversal ultimately ended in being the bottom of the downtrend, <coughs> excuse me, and an uptrend ensued. Now your risk is controlled via stop loss. If you're going short, the stop loss is placed just above the top of the consolidation, which you are entering for the short from. Just above is it a bit vague, but how far above the consolidation we place the stop will depend on the volatility asset and what time frame you're trading. It all depends on you. It depends on your risk reward ratio. It depends on your knowledge. It depends on your capital. So I like to look at a prior four bar consolidation and see how much the price moved outside of that consolidation before eventually making a bigger move in the expected direction. If you're going long and the stop loss is placed just below the bottom of the consolidation from which you are entering along from, once again, just below means that you need to accommodate for the volatility of the asset. So here we see downtrend, four period consolidation. Okay. We would use the high okay, and set our stop loss. Okay. And then we could have gotten in to a very nice trade. Now, anyone can get caught, get into a trade, but the skill comes in getting out. Our stop loss helps you control your risk, the onset of the trade. The strategy doesn't work all the time. So the stop loss gets us out at a predetermined point if the price keeps moving against us. Now, remember, until you open a trade, you're not in the great race, okay? You're just sitting on the sidelines. When you open a trade, what do you do? Opening a trade doesn't create profit. Opening a trade creates risk. You don't make profit until you close the trade. So closing a trade is more important than entering a trade. And if the market moves against you, you need to be able to close that trade with a very tight stop loss. Okay. Because remember, opening a trade creates risk. Exiting a trade either creates profit or loss. But until you open a trade, you're not in the game at all. So our risk is managed, but what about, what if we get, get it right? As the examples show, sometimes after we get in, the price may move a bit in our favor, and sometimes it moves a whole lot in our favor. I have found that typically the pattern provides at least a decent sized move in our direction after entry. Decent size is relatively is relative to the recent wave. What I do personally is I set my stop loss. When I've gotten a decent size move in my favor, I change my stop loss to a trailing stop loss, lock in some of my profit, and then let it keep riding. Therefore, you can place your profit target just above the prior low if going shorter, just below the prior high of going long. This is a good conservative target that is likely to get hit. And a trailing stop loss can also be used as a great exit method. So before a trade signal develops and before any trade is taken, we already know our entry point, our exit point, our risk and reward ratio. And you should always avoid trades that are two to one or lower. 
make sure your risk is covered in your trade. One of the best ways to do it, like I use TradingView, is you can actually put your risk reward ratio directly on your charts. Now, if you don't have a good results for the strategy, chances are you're too focused on tiny waves. Reversals of tiny waves mean nothing. They are noise. Tiny wave reversals don't break the spirit of the trend. Focus on big waves, big movements up, big movements down. Okay. It's not gonna happen all the time. This is a great strategy. It is one of my favorites. Not only is it useful for trading purposes, but even if you aren't involved in a trade, it will let you know when a trend may be turning. If you don't get any potential profits, you can you should consider your trading strategy. Keep honing your approach and zeroing in on the assets that better align with the guidelines until you see profitability. So thank you very much. This is only a general set of information. You you can't build a, tra a, a trade or a strategy around what I told you tonight. Okay, I gave you pointers, I gave you pieces of information. Now you can start building your own strategy using these basics and move it into, and practice it and put in your own pieces to it until you become the king of that strategy, until you see it profitable. But this is a nice little easy strategy. You're not using involved indicators and oscillators. I like price action, price patterns, and support and resistance. I'm a pretty simple trader. I like to feel an asset and I like the strategy because I can see with my eyes what price is telling me. So once again, thank you very much for joining us. Have a very successful trade and thank you for supporting Alvexo. Have a wonderful night now.